very good evening and welcome to the fourth estate, Charles Mongu Shampagi. And tonight, with my colleague Chris Obore, let me start the introduction with Chris Obore. Chris, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. I will introduce the rest after a short while. Um, uh, the battle and the contest has been in the youth wing of the National Resistance Movement over the last week alone. The youth leaders of the NRM, outside including those in parliament, have held at least two meetings with President Yuri Museveni, the NRM party chairman, to try and reconcile what was emerging as differences within the youth wing on who the party should support come 2016. The contest is between the Secretary General, Amama Mbabazi, who's also Prime Minister, and President Yuri Museveni, who's the party chairman and has been leader of that party since he founded it. Tonight, let me start the introduction with Dennis Namara. Dennis is a presidential advisor and he is also chairman of the youth wing of the NRM. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Very nice uh, to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. I'm greeting listeners and viewers. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Chiwanuka. Chiwanuka is the NRM national vice chairperson for Eastern Uganda. Uh, Chiwanuka Moses, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles, and the dear listeners of NTV. And uh, we also have uh, Ibrahim Chitata. Ibrahim is the youth chairman for NRM in Luengo district. Uh, thank you. Ibrahim, very thank nice you, Charles. You. Uh, good evening, our viewers. Uh, it's good uh, you're viewing into NTV. I need to put a disclaimer as we start this discussion that the meetings that have taken place between the president and the youth leaders of the NRM have been an effort to try and harmonize uh, positions. So it's difficult at this stage to tell who belongs to which camp. Um, uh, we continue to feed on what <coughs> we don't know. But maybe we'll establish what is going on. The, the big question we need to ask tonight is the position taken by the youth, how does it help the NRM as a party and the country? as it moves towards achievement of proper democratization and especially survival of the NRM. Dennis, let me start with you. I know you are nursing ambitions to contest for a constituency in 2016. Absolutely. And uh, I also know that you are one man who has managed to move the two major protagonists in the NRM to a function, a private function that you held in Kibale district some time back. Yes, absolutely. We have been reporting, quoting some of your members about this apparent competition between your Secretary General and your Chairman over 2016. What exactly is going on within your party? Well, thank you so much. Once again, good evening viewers. Charles, thanks so much for hosting us and my colleagues who are here. Number one, it is very true that I hosted the President and the Prime Minister at my wedding in Chibari District. However, we have to know one thing. Uh, hosting them was nothing in consideration of the political issues surrounding the country and in NRM. Uh, to answer your question more precisely, I do not think that there is competition between President Museveni and Secretary General Mama Mbabazi in terms of uh, who becomes the flag bearer of NRM. Because we must respect people's views and opinions and someone's word. The Secretary General is someone whom I know very principled. He made it very, very clear that he is not interested and he will not stand against President M7. I do not know why some people continue all the time pushing it, pushing it. Maybe some of them have their private and their own interests in terms of what they are pushing for. He made it very clear that he's not standing. So as far as we are concerned in NRM now, we have only one person you who are, are, who, Dennis, whom, whom we are pushing Mr. for. Mr. Namara, you're one of that those people M7. who have been said to belong to the Amama Mbaba's camp. Information we have today is that you're trying to realign yourself and make yourself good to your chairman so that you're no longer doubted. Well, I don't agree with you because, number one, I don't think I've ever made any public statement in terms of whom I support. You have to understand, number one, I'm a SEC member. SEC vets candidates for presidency. So maybe I had first watched the space, what was going on, and then know which steps to take. Mm. I can make it very clear to you, and it is on record. Anyone can prove me wrong. I have never in the public said that I support Prime Minister Amama Mbabazi. Yes. And I cannot support someone I who's, who's that not you contesting say you in You have case. never said in public. Mm. I have seen an intelligence brief, which I have reported about, talking about a character called India. Mm. And Dennis Namara is mentioned expressly <laughs> in that <laughs> intelligence well, brief. Well, that is not a public well, statement. Well, that is well, private information <laughs> that the intelligence of the government you work for, well, you Charles, subscribe Charles, to, has written about you. Charles, that, that, that's your word. 
because I do not see that document. Because I have, how do I prove? I do not author intelligence briefs. So I, how do I know that what you are saying? Is, how do I know that what you are saying is true? That you have not read it from red paper? Is it deliberate from you to make a distinction between your public statements and your private statements? Uh, no, no, absolutely not. You said no, you have no, never no, said in no, public. Number one. So what have you said in private? Number one, you see, what can, you cannot send public. Mm. Uh, what you say is for public consumption. What I send in private, like if it is to my wife or to you in, in private, that's different. But I want to make it very clear for pre of precision purposes. Number one. In NRM, the president, President Museveni, is the president of NRM. Amama Mbaba is the secretary general. Amama Mbaba has made it very clear mm. that he's not going to contest against President Museveni. And you so think... So I, I do not know why you people of the media and many other people keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Maybe there are some other interests you have that we do not know let as a party. Let, 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 let me just speak <coughs> to the chairman of Luengo Youth. Yes. When a party holds a caucus and discusses nothing else apart from what it calls internal, uh, wh wh what it calls um, scheming and planning within the party to take over outside the rules of that party. It passes a resolution, gets members to sign against that resolution, comes out, holds a series of follow-up meetings, chooses to pull out of party coffers or public coffers, I don't know, six billion shillings, gives it to members of parliament to popularize a resolution taken by that party when there is no apparent competition and youth of that party get arrested. You held two meetings with the president recently in the last one week and you blame the media for creating this situation in your party. Uh, true, I want to, <coughs> to echo the same message that my chairman has said. Uh, you're fully aware that uh, these group are colleagues, the, the president of M70 and the secretary general Mambazi, these are two colleagues. And uh, it's now public knowledge that the uh, Honorable Amman Babazi signed as number 202 in that resolution that officially endorsed His Excellency President Museveni to be the sole candidate of the NRM in the next presidential elections. Uh, my only challenge that I've been facing, uh, at least my, my, my chairman, Namara, has it with the, with the media. But for me, I've always had a challenge with my seniors, my seniors in the NRM Youth League, who have been pushing this message that for us, no matter what the Secretary General says, uh, uh, whether he's not going to stand or what, for us we will still push his candidature. Now me, uh, as a person, uh, Chairman of Royengo, I, I had a very divergent view on that. Mm -hmm. I'm one person who believes that when a resolution or uh, a decision is arrived at, in a meeting called formally, even if you differ from such a position, you have, you, 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 you are held, you are actually entangled by a decision arrived at in a meeting. Because meetings are supposed to to, to arrive at ideas and the superior idea should be taking the day and we believe that the superior idea took the day while they were in Changwanzi. Mm. and by the way i want to categorically state that the youth of the nrm across the country mm. left right center north west east they still believe that his excellency president Museveni is the right torch bearer to deliver us to where we are when heading when you to. went to meet the president the two <coughs> times you have met the president mm. The first meeting was to resolve the disagreements within your youth wing. According to you. Were you part of the meeting in mm. Rochester? Were you yes. part of those meetings in Rochester? Uh, I was part of both meetings. Yes. Actually, uh, the, the media has misreported these meetings, but uh, I want to able to tell our viewers that these were closed door meetings, and the main purpose of those meetings was reconciliation. You see, as a to father... To reconcile what? As a father, President Museveni saw his young boys uh, pu pu putting girders at each other, putting spears at each other's necks. So as the father of the nation, as the father of the NRM, he had a duty to bring these young people together and then harmonize their Why positions. Why were they putting then, daggers against one another? I openly told you and Mr. Chairman told you that the media has been portrayed, portraying uh, the NRM mm. as a divided party. And I also told you that some so members... So the media reports a story and the president or chairman of the party feels a responsibility to reconcile people where there is no problem? Possibly. I also told you that in addition to your misreporting in the media, I, I don't want to accuse you as a person, mm -hmm. but media as no, you the are. Media, uh, media. I am a member of the fourth estate. I'm a member of the media. So the, the if you accuse the media, <coughs> even if you try to exclude me, <laughs> you're pulling us together. But yes. my question to you, um, uh, uh, Mr. Chitata, my question to you is, yes. the media misreports and the chairman of a party holds a meeting to reconcile. You Who should he have been reconciling? You have skipped a bit. The media misreports. Yes. And then some junior members of the party, the NRM, mm. 
pick on what the media is misreporting mm -hmm. and then choose to go ahead and push it forward. Can you explain you to remember? our viewers yes. the arrest of Omodo Modo, Luzindana, and the Kaihua tapes? Yes, thank you. I, I may not go into very many details because when matters are handled in law, I'm not a lawyer myself, mm. but uh, I, I think when matters are before judges, uh, you leave it to them. But now that they are out, we can able to say... The judge are your viewers, the judge are the supporters of the NRM, the judge are mm -hmm. the people of Uganda who are seeing this, what is going on in your party, and asking questions on what is going on. They are not getting the right answers. All of you politicians are playing politics and telling them lies instead of coming out open and saying, this is what is going on. Mm -hmm. The arrest of Omodo Modo was not cr a creation of the media. The arrest of Luzindana was not a creation of the media. We have a challenge within the party and we're trying to deal with it. Uh, the arrest of Omodo Modo, uh, Luzindana and others uh, was, was a creation of their actions. Not a creation of the state, not a creation of the media, mm. but it was a creation of their actions. What actions? Uh, at, least, uh, at least for you have read very many intelligence reports, not like me. <coughs> but uh, I also got information that these people were moving across the country, soliciting signatures. Uh, I'm also told, may mm. not be able to adduce evidence, mm. that uh, they, they moved around bribing people to sign uh, papers that were supposed to be used to purportedly call a delegates conference uh, with a sinister, a sinister objective of uh, passing a vote of, no confidence, confidence, uh, a vote of no confidence in one or two other members of the party. And uh, to us, as, as, as cadres of the NRM, uh, we, we saw that as something that was not right. Mm. But we, me, me, me as a person... Are, are they cadres of me, NRM or not? Me are, those, as a person, are those individuals cadres of NRM me, or not? Me as a person, mm. my only uh, solution would have been Let's have a delegates conference and address these matters. But when which, they are, which matters do you moment, want to address? A moment, a moment Charles. No, which but matters do you want to address? A moment, Charles. But when they are matters of illegality, matters that are in utter <coughs> contrast to the law, then police and uh, and the judiciary, then they pick it up. So when police picked it up, it doesn't matter whether it's an internal NRA matter. Mm. Police is there to, to, to ensure that there is law and order. It doesn't matter where that law and order is. Mr. Moses Chwanuka, mm. before I come to Chris. Yes, sir. Um, you listen to your colleagues, they yeah. contradict each other right here before our viewers <laughs> on what is happening within your party. Can you at least be honest and tell us what is going on and especially the import of the meetings you held with the president, especially the first meeting you held before the one you did on uh, Wednesday? Well, Charles, I think I have to agree with the, the chairman, Mr. Namara, and the also agree with the Mr. Ibrahim Chitata. You, uh, the reason of, uh, you see, what uh, the, our dear viewers must understand, President Museven and Mama and Babas, actually, me, I call them one person. Mm. For reason being that uh, there, is no, there is no big change between President Museven and Mama and Babas. Only that uh, people are shifting goalposts from one position to another. And it's very clear that uh, Honorable Mama and Babas himself stood and uh, endorsed the President seven in not only endorsing but even signed. But uh, the challenge is these uh, youth like Omodo Omodo and Rosindana claiming and thinking on behalf of no, Honorable Mbabas. Mm. Actually it was uh, it was uh, what uh, making people ask many questions whereby the man himself openly came out and said I'm not contesting against the president. So you think that a whole ruling party that has been in charge of this country for the last almost 29 years. Yes. With a majority in parliament. True. Would choose to draw from lean party coffers to pay its members of parliament 4 million shillings to go to every sub county. 4 million shillings for every sub county to mobilize to pass, a, to pass a resolution because of what the media has been reporting. And you hold back to back meetings. I haven't gone to your fight at uh, the party headquarters. I. A few I weeks ago. I think Between that youth that belong to one group and youth that belong to another group, and uh, you trying to look into the eyes of our viewers and tell them that is just the media? I think that is not true, Charles. Mm. You see, when uh, the members of parliament uh, were sent to their constituencies, it is not all about the Changkwan's resolution. In Changkwan's, uh, they discussed a number of things, not only the Changkwan's resolution, but only that even the Changkwan's resolution was part of what they are meant to actually are discussing the achievements of the NRM. They had to tell the, the supporters of the NRM at the ground what the NRM has achieved are in these years. Are you surprised, gentlemen? Yes. Are you surprised, gentlemen? Let me bring this to Chris Obore. Chris, mm. are you surprised that a party that has been in charge has never had reason to pass a resolution 
all of a sudden wakes up from nowhere and decides to pass a resolution and even send its MPs to popularize that resolution. And then youth of that party have a fist fight at the party headquarters over who belongs to which side. Is that normal in a functioning political party, functioning which is in charge of the government? First of all, <coughs> we are discussing a very <coughs> big national crisis in this country. And that is the crisis of that generation you call the young generation. It is so absurd that instead of being os optimistic of the future, I think people are worried of the future, judging on the composition of the generation that's supposed to take care of that future. And the youth in this country, if we look at them from the NRM prism alone, we may lose the bigger picture. But since we are using the NRM, I must tell you, the youth in the NRM, or any political party in this country, are in a very absurd situation. They are mentally captured, physically disabled, and they are spiritually eroded. <laughs> so they have been reduced to self-seekers, petty self-seekers, and they are failing to interrogate society. They are trying to failing to forecast what is good for them and generations to come, and they have resorted to short-termism, looking how to survive. If I ask the NRM people, now you are speaking in the tongues, you see how they are speaking in the tongues. The, the same thing, I agree with Namara, I agree. I, it makes me think Namara, I'm not talking in this leadership, and everyone comes to agree with Namara. <laughs> it is not a matter of agreeing. It's a party. In issues of leadership issues of governance there must be a continuous exchange of ideas new old so if people are beginning saying oh i agree with my chairman like they go to say oh muse papa mm, i kneel down so so that my papa says okay go home with an envelope and that is a tragedy for this country i expected the nrm youth to begin interrogating their party basing on what they see as the issues affecting this country I don't have the correct figures, but they say almost 78 percent of this population is a young population, and that places a burden on a young leader. When we talk about rape, child is affecting a young girl. You talk about murder. If you read newspapers, it's young women, young boys who are being murdered. If you talk about unemployment, it is young people who are mainly affected. If you talk about abuse of workers, it is young people who are mainly being abused. You know, in these banks, these people are below 35 who are running them. They are the ones who are overworked. They are the ones who are exploited, poorly paid. They are the ones running insurance firms on no money. They work at the streets to make money for private companies. And then you have youth leaders, the Namaras, mm. disagreeing on, oh, Muse is still around, without explaining to us that these are the reasons why we think Museveni should be lead. Yes. These are the reasons why mm. we think Imbabazi should lead. What are the policy positions of Imbabazi? that are not in agreement with the policy positions of Museveni. Before you begin saying we want Museveni, we want Mbabazi. If Mbabazi stood as a president, if Museveni says yes, Mbabazi stand, contest against BSG, do we see Mbabazi treat BSG differently from the way Museveni treated him? Chris. And Let's then the Namaras are speaking to like pigeon. The question of I, you annoy me. Where is the policy debate issues that affect this country and especially its youth population that the youth leaders within the national resistance movement are trying to articulate and uh, in these meetings where do the majority of you instead of asking for envelopes what for are the policy options after short commercial for? break we'll be right back